Welcome friends, back to another video in our BASF series, building a Squarespace site from scratch. Start to finish. Start to finish. This I, is why I start, do the acronym and you do the that's explanation. That's true, and in your defense, scratch and start both start with us. So. Ooh, and they both have a C in them and from an From scratch H to finish. Them. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so in this video, uh, last video, you walked people through the mood board, kind of the initial color exploration mm -hmm, visuals. Mm -hmm. And in this video, you actually build what I would call is the brand. As yes. the assistant creative director on this project, this is what you would call it. I would call it the brand, uh, which is really fun. And I, again, like I watch these videos back, not seeing the whole process, and I get to see what you go through. And it's just so fun to watch. Oh, you, yeah, you picked that font. Oh, that font looks cool. Oh, wow, it, it now is a logo. Like, how did you just make that a logo? I hate logo design, I'm so bad at it, so it's fun. That is, in my opinion, what's really fun about this video is you are gonna see the kind of meandering, wandering. Oh, wow, 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 that's our brand name, is Wandering Part everybody. of my brain that builds out this brand from just the mood board. So I take you through looking at the mood board, picking out design elements, um, searching things like Creative Market for uh, cool fonts or graphic elements that are pre-made that we can use in the, the brand styles. And then ultimately, you'll see it all culminate in some fonts that I pick out for the brand, our color palette, and then a logo and some graphic elements. And it really does start to kind of yeah. build out into this entire brand, and that is what I'm gonna take forward into creating the Squarespace website. And what I think is really fun about this is, again, if you watch the intro video to the series, what we talked about was, we're gonna sell this whole package, the brand, the site, everything when it's done. And my hope is that someone watching this just goes, I can literally just change my name in this font that you've chosen and that becomes my logo and, and it just becomes everything for you and it's done. It's literally out of the box done for you. You just have to change a word in the logo. Uh, so that's really fun. And I think that as you watch this back, you'll, you might be able to see just how different this could evolve for depending on what type of business you have. Like it's not just for a creative studio, which is how you set this up. It could be for a lot of different things, a photographer, an artist, a musician, anything. Uh, could be really fun. Yeah, so I hope in this video, it's it's a little bit longer than the last video whoa, in our whoa, series. Whoa, whoa, don't, don't. I know, but I'm just saying, I'm getting them prepared. Cozy up, yeah. you're gonna learn a lot of kind of tips and tricks. You're gonna learn some secrets that I use in order to test run different graphic elements before I buy them. And hopefully you're just entertained by the, like I said, meandering way that we ultimately arrive at this brand. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, in this video, I am going to show you how I take this mood board for the fictional brand that I'm creating, and I'm going to transform it into all of the different brand elements that are going to go into the final website design. So the typography, the fictional logo that I'm creating, the graphic elements, all of that. I need to design those different pieces so that when it comes time to build the website, I'll have this fictional brand to base it off of. Now, normally in my design process, I follow a very specific order to coming up with these different brand elements. It's the order that I go over inside Better Branding Course. And I usually start with typography, then I solidify my color, I come up with the graphic elements, and then I use all of those elements to build a logo, and then finally photography. And that's sort of the order that I recommend people use, especially if they're starting out and building their own brands. But in this case, you are going to see me kind of bop around and use different inspiration points until I arrive at all of those different elements, probably at different times. You've already seen that I've used the mood board process to come up with my color palette, and I don't stray too far from that. So since the colors are already decided, now you'll see how I pick up these different pieces along the way of the typography and the graphic elements. And you're gonna get to watch that journey inside my crazy brain as it unfolds. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use what I call my visual vocabulary to look at this mood board and pull out any design elements that specifically speak to my five tone words here. So when I say visual vocabulary, what I really mean is just design elements that evoke a specific tone word. So to give you an idea of how my brain works, I will go through each of these tone words and see um, using my visual vocabulary which design elements I think speak to those words. So, First, let's take creative. What is giving me that feeling of being creative? And you start to identify the actual visual elements that are speaking to that tone. So these brush strokes, for example, feel creative to me. And also maybe in this top image, you can see almost like a canvas or a um, you know brush stroke texture to that top one. So that feels very creative. Now for organic, we all have our, our words that evoke different feelings for us. For me, when I say organic, I really mean 
both this this mixture of earthy and grounded, but then also this idea of very um, unstructured and so not rigid. So it kind of it occupies those two places of meaning in my brain. So I look for, look for images with design elements that speak to that word. So quite literally, that is something like you know a botanical or a a leaf shape here that kind of has that organic feeling. But then also. For example, the randomness of the shapes here, that, that very unstructured shape, that could feel organic. Same with just the movement of this painting. And additionally, these shapes down here, all of that feels very fluid and organic. Okay, now quirky kind of feels, for some reason in my mind, a little bit retro, a little bit unexpected, um, maybe playful. And so I can look at this board and see things like Definitely the shapes and the unconventional nature of this arrangement of letters feels kind of playful and quirky to me. Um, I think the color combination of these two feels quirky to me. And really just this overall kind of vintage vibe, like this chair and this cool booth here, they all just feel a little bit unexpected, a little bit left of center. As for bold, whenever I think of bold, I think of contrast. So I love the thickness of this font in this image. I also just love the um, the boldness of the couch in what is otherwise a more simple design, interior design. The boldness of this shape of the leaf that's more of a dark color compared to the white background, that feels bold to me. Lastly, we have this word refined, which I think provides a nice balance to the previous word bold. And in my mind, refined means something a little bit more subtle, a little bit more delicate, and maybe a little bit more simple. So. For example, in this image, the serif font here feels a little bit delicate, more refined compared to say the boldness of this font. I also love, for example, in here we have both because this font with the M and the Morgan May feels a little bit bolder um, and maybe even a little quirky because it has that retro uh, look to it. But then this very delicate and simple circle to me adds a little bit more of a refined nature to it. So what I'm doing as I go through all of these is I'm just taking sort of mental notes of any of these visual cues that I can pull from. And then I'm going to start a new artboard, big surprise. And I'm gonna write down some ideas of places that I can go hunting for some of those visual elements. So what I wrote down for this was some type of cool serif display font. Um, which was largely inspired by this image here, but I thought that could definitely pick up the bold and also quirky kind of retro feeling uh, of those two tone words. Then maybe some organic imperfect shapes. Definitely I was inspired by this image as well as the Lula image down here. And to me that occupies the more organic, maybe even quirky and playful position there on the tone words. The other idea I wrote down was randomly placed simple geometric shapes, which is just my convoluted way of saying I really picked up on in this Morgan May image, the simple geometrics and how not just simple, but how perfect those geometric shapes are in contrast with some of these more imperfect shapes. I thought there could be something interesting there of playing off of those two elements together. So that way I was getting still a little bit more of that creative, um, unstructured placement of them, but the shapes themselves could be a little bit more refined and simple. And then finally, painterly brush strokes um, I picked up on initially just to occupy that creative word on the brand tone word. So I think between all four of these jumping off points, I've pretty much hit on all five of my tone words. And that is my goal with all of this is can I look for enough of these different elements to come together in order to represent visually these five tone words. Okay, so let's go hunting together. Uh, let's say I'm looking for this cool serif display font here. The first place that I go every time is to Creative Market. This is for a couple of reasons. I think that the quality of design assets here, um, if you've never been to Creative Market, it's just basically a marketplace for all of these different types of design elements. I really like it because it's affordable typically but you're still not utilizing free assets that just anybody on the internet can have. So usually the quality is a little bit better. And then I also feel great supporting other artists and designers and just throwing some money their way because they take the time to design all these things. Not to mention it saves me a lot of time if I'm buying things like patterns or graphic elements, I don't have to create those myself. So I love looking for different brand elements on here. 
Not to mention, I often find a lot of inspiration just from the display images that people put together because they're incredible. So you could do something like search retro serif font just here in the search bar and you would get all of these different options here that you could look through. But in this particular case, uh, another way that I do this is I'll go to Pinterest and I'll just search creative market and that pulls in a lot of these display images on creative market, but the algorithm is kind of filtering based on things that I've already looked at, uh, which I find very helpful. So this was actually an image that I came across in my mood board journey and it's for this font called Rylan created by Jen Wagner. And immediately it stood out to me because it fits to me the bill perfectly. It's got a little bit of a retro vibe to it. So to me, it's kind of that quirky throwback. But then it's also something about these thin parts of the letters here feel a little bit more re refined as well as it just being kind of a serif font. But then the thickness of the strokes themselves feel really bold. Now, just a reminder, I'm super overanalyzing. These things are all kind of going on in my head uh, instantaneously. I'm just like, oh, that fits the vibe of what I'm looking for. But I'm trying to really verbalize it for you guys so that if you're not a designer, you can really see what my process is like and you can start to pick up on a lot of this, like I said, visual vocabulary. Like, oh, I didn't know why I thought that that font felt bold, but it's because like Caroline said, the strokes are really thick. Um, so I hope that gives you some type of rationale when you're searching for images and design assets online as well. What I also love about this is A, it's very reasonably priced, $19. It also comes with this um, companion font, which is called Cairo Grotesque. I don't know if I'll use that, but um, I like the way those play together in the first image. But then what I also really love is the third thing it comes with are all of these hand painted high resolution shapes. So these are what I would call a graphic element. And what's cool about that is it ticks a lot of the boxes that I just mentioned to you guys. It's brush stroke, so it's got that creative vibe to it. They're sort of geometric shapes, but they're very imperfectly drawn. So maybe they have a little bit more of that organic texture to them. And so if you could get all of this with $19, that to me is a heck of a deal. So this to me feels like a really great place to start because like I said, it checks a lot of different boxes. What I'll do during this part of the process is just kind of copy and paste a lot of these images um, that I find inspiring so that I can see things at a glance and how they kind of combine with what, we, what I've already created. So these are just a bunch of images I found. I think these were some textures on Creative Market. This was a stock photography pack that I felt was very serendipitously aligned with the color palette. It just felt kind of earthy, but also simple and refined. And I knew that this fictional brand that I wanted to create, I want it to be some sort of creative consultancy or creative studio. Somebody who is in a creative field, but maybe they have clients and then maybe they have like an online course related to whatever they do, like social media consultant, for example. I also found this um, Instagram story templates with these abstract lines. Not that I'm looking for Instagram stories, but this is something that I could be inspired by and recreate my own version of these sort of organic lines. I thought that was really neat. And then I keep coming back to these imperfect shapes overlapping with some of this transparency. You see it here, you see it here, and then you see it up here in the mood board. So to me, that is a cue that maybe I want to create something or combine elements in a way that gives off that effect. Once I feel like I have quite a few different graphic element options to choose from, this is the phase that I like to call try before you buy. So I don't know about you, but I don't wanna just go and drop, even if it's $20, I don't wanna drop $20 on a font that I'm not gonna end up using because for some reason it doesn't go with X, Y, and Z other element that I create. So for all of these different graphic elements, I like to try them out before I actually say, okay, these are the things that I want. Not to mention, in my head, I'm kind of trying to keep my overall cost to under $100. I think $100 is a fair investment in design elements that you're gonna create into this beautiful brand. So I also like to kind of price things out before I just impulsively buy one thing. Now I have a couple of secret tips on how to try different things before you buy them. I'm gonna share them with you in this video. Since I feel really, really inspired by this Ryland font, that's actually where I'm going to start. Over here on Creative Market, where the font is listed, a lot of times you will see an area to do preview text here and you'll see it pop up below. For some reason, the preview is not working on this font, but that did not deter me, friends. I know that Jen Wagner has her own website so I typed in Jen Wagner Ryland font. 
and I looked to see the font listed on her site and she actually has a font preview down here. So that's what you're looking for is a font preview. Um, usually, like I said, you'll see it on a creative market, but this for this particular case, I didn't see it, but can't stop me because I, I tracked it down. So what I like to do here is put my brand name. Like if I, if I thought I was gonna maybe use this font for my logo or a headline on my website, but um, for this brand, I know that this is what I wanna use for the logo font. And I'm calling this kind of fictional brand Galactic Creative Agency. So let's say I wanna use that word Galactic, you'll see why I picked that name a little bit later. Didn't come, it didn't come along until further in the process, but I'll kind of share with you my inspiration. Okay, so once I have that, I am going to, on my Mac, hit Command Shift 4, and that gives me these little crosshairs to do a screenshot. So now I'm gonna head back over to Adobe XD and drop in my screenshot here. And I'm telling you this will make a huge difference if you're seeing it in your brand name or in the environment that you, or in the context rather, of where you're trying to use this font. And you can decide if you really like it. So I really like this font. I think it goes with the vibe of what I'm trying to create up here. Now I can start being inspired by that and kind of seeing where it leads me and playing around with, okay, let's just pretend I'm gonna build out my logo here. So where I went from this is I kind of wanted to pick a font. Um, I knew, let's say for my fictional brand, I'm gonna create Galactic Creative Agency. Since this is so ornate, I want a font pairing that's a lot more streamlined. I think what I went with was just this all caps Adele Sands, and I made sure to increase the letter spacing so that it was a little bit more refined. And because the other font is so bold, I wanted it to have a little bit more white space in between to create. And it was just this happy accident that where my brain spaced it was right in between the gray background color of the text preview, but I I just was like, oh, that's a happy accident. I should also say, and just remind you guys, when I say try before you buy, there's no part of me that is trying to swipe this font for free and try to like use it in my website. It's really just to test run here in this program. And then if I decide that I like it, I'm definitely gonna pay for it so that you can actually use it on the website. But just wanted to make sure I explicitly said that. So now that we're building this together, I really like the way that these are pairing. But now I thought, okay, Let's go one step further and see what this font would look like in our brand colors since we've already decided the color palette. And so here is where I get super, super sleuthy to try and see what this font would look like in a different color. Obviously, I can't just highlight this text and change it because it's a screenshot. So instead of doing that, what I can do is open my screenshot in Photoshop and then I can go up here to select color range and I can just eye drop this gray background color. I can address, adjust the fuzziness, but I think this will be fine, and click OK. And that's gonna pretty much select the entire background color, and I just hit Delete. It'll get a little bit grainy the more you kind of um, zoom in, but pretty much it'll give you an idea of this font with without the background color. And what you can do from here is now I can go into my color overlay and I can choose my brand color. Let me show you a cool thing with colors, by the way, while I'm here. Another reason I love XD is because of this little um, assets folder here. So if I delete all of these, this is how you'll start out with zero colors here. If you just highlight this little color palette of all these shapes that I've created, and I click add, it'll automatically swatch all of the hex codes and I can have those as an asset, like a color library throughout my whole document. So that comes in handy big time. So to pop back over to Photoshop, I can just right click this for screen color, click copy, and then I can paste it. And voila, we have this here in the forest green. So I'm going to hit command A to select all of it, copy it here from Photoshop, and bring it back over here. And so now you can start to see what this would look like in green. And so I actually already kind of built this out. So I had my Creative Studio now in the green. And then instead of that gray background, I decided to make the background this parchment color to nicely kind of encapsulate those items. And now I can say, okay, I really, really like this font. Um, I'm already leaning towards it. And this is already giving me a great place to start with my brand elements. Once I had two of the fonts picked out, that's when I wanted to start playing around with the more graphic elements, like those 
blob shapes or maybe other geometric shapes, those other things that I had on my graphic elements list. So in order to do that, I came into Procreate on my iPad. And the first place that I found inspiration was in this image from my mood board. If you remember, I was talking about how I liked the idea of these very perfect geometric shapes, but maybe they were in like a texture that was more imperfect and more creative looking. So that was my initial kind of point of illustration. I have these brushes that I have purchased before that are called crayons. And so they have this cool crayon texture to them that's more rough. But then I thought, okay, if I can create more of a perfect circular shape, but in this more rough texture, that might look kind of cool. And what if I had a lot of different ones, you know, like a line like here or a square or whatever. So that was my initial point of inspiration. I played around with that until I kind of came up with these little shapes in my color scheme. And I thought, oh, those are kind of interesting, refined yet um, playful and quirky because I'm playing with the proportions and then they're creative because they're in that rough texture. It just brought together a lot of my different elements. And um, I also decided to add these little background colors that you can see with a more solid wash of color. And I purposefully kind of made them askew so they weren't perfectly colored in. I thought, oh, that's interesting. So the final bit of inspiration came when I realized that if I, if I took this kind of pink shape and then I rotated the more mustard line. Like I just did this sort of on accident. It created what looked like a little planet. And then I thought, okay, what if I, instead of doing this X, what if I turn that into a little star? And suddenly before I knew it, this idea of these little, you know, star shapes that definitely feel like something when they're aligned like this, but could also be much more abstract and it wouldn't have to be so literal. And so that's where the galactic name came in. I had a different name before that, but I thought, oh, that's cute. I'll do this very loose kind of space theme. But if somebody wanted to retrofit this website for their brand and they didn't want anything to do with space, you could use some of these more star shapes. And rather than creating the sort of planet alignment, you know, you can use them separately. So that was my inspiration point. And once I had some of these elements, I brought them back over to my Adobe XD document. Okay, so once I had this final kind of cornerstone brand assembled together, um, this is my fictional logo. So it has the font that I wanted. It's got a secondary font here and it's got these graphic elements. So that's plenty for me to kind of pull from and build out the brand from there. So I took this logo and I started, surprise, surprise, a new artboard. And so this is where I'm going to build out all of my fonts and the different graphic elements that I'm going to use using this as my inspiration point. Also, just as an aside, I did want to see what this lockup, this logo lockup could look like if you replaced your brand name with it. So I tested it with Made Vibrant and I still think it looks really cute. And again, like I mentioned before, you could change these elements if you didn't want it to be so um, kind of spacey, but I still think it feels abstract and not too literal. So with the website, if you did wanna just revamp your logo, you could totally do that. From here, it's pretty obvious what our headline font is gonna be since we like that Ryland font so much. So I went ahead and used my little Photoshop hack to type in, let's say like, what I think could be a brand tagline or a headline on, on this website. I typed that into the font preview and then used the Photoshop hack to see what it would look like in these brand colors. But once I did that, I got kind of curious about different color combinations, especially going back to the inspiration and knowing that this coral on pink looked really cool. Um, and so I just wanted to play around with what color combinations could work. So I did pink on coral. I did um, the mustard on the tan, I did the pink on the hunter green, and then I did the mustard on what I'm calling mist. And so all of these color combinations looked really cool to me. 
and I just put them in here so that I would remember when it comes time to do the website, maybe some cool design treatments with these different color combinations. Also, like I said, I pretty much already picked out my H2 font just by accident, um, knowing that it paired really nicely in the logo with my headline font. So I'm just gonna call that my H2 font. And I use the same letter spacing and everything as in the, the logo for that. So that was pretty easy for me. And then finally I thought, let me at least pick out some potential body fonts so that I can use that on the website when it comes time for the design. I don't have to decide exactly right now. Um, Cause like I said, I'm not creating this brand. It's more for the website. And so the three that I thought of that I thought could occupy something missing between these two fonts, um, I picked out a serif font called Laura. These are all Google fonts because I know that Squarespace plays really nicely with Google fonts and I also wanted to, knowing that Rylan was a lot more custom, I wanted to offer up a brand font that could be really accessible and you can download Google fonts for free and use them on a lot of different programs like Keynote and Google Slides and all that stuff. So the three I went with were Laura, um, Futura, and quicksand. Laura I thought was cool because it's like a lighter serif font but I wanted to have at least one serif font in there to just to see what it would look like on the website and if I liked it and I felt like it went with the brand better that way. Futura has a cool kind of retro yet modern vibe to it that feels a little bit kind of outer spacey to me but also um, just fits with the mood board. And then finally quicksand is a little bit thinner than Futura but occupies the same space. It has a really grotesque, which is another font term, but grotesque vibe to it, but then also has some like softer edges. Um, anyway, without getting too much into it, those are the three that I chose. So I'll try those out on the website. And then of course we have the colors that we already chose. But the last piece before I was ready to take this to the Squarespace website was I wanted to incorporate more of these graphic elements. And so I went back to my trusty Rylan font. And if you remember, I saw that with the font, you get these painted shapes. And so in true try before you buy fashion, I wanted to use some of those to see if I could turn them into graphic elements. So that's when I hopped back onto my iPad. So all I did here was I copied the preview image from Creative Market for those hand painted shapes that come with the Rylan font. And I just pasted it right here into my Procreate document. Again, I am gonna try and play around with this image and manipulate the shapes here. It's gonna be a low resolution version of whatever I would do, because remember, this is just kind of trying before I buy to make sure that these shapes are the direction that I wanna go. And so I'm just testing it out in my own here. If I use these for the final brand in the site, I will purchase the font, I will get the high res vector um, shapes here and I'll manipulate those and it'll be a much cleaner high resolution version but for now we're just going to do it in a low res environment and play around with some different techniques. So in order to isolate some of these shapes I am going to need to remove the background image from them so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of remove this top text here. I'm just going to cut that right out and now I'm going to go back to my selection tool and use the automatic selection to select this background and you can see it kind of inverts the colors there so you know what is selected. So the black area is what's gonna be selected. So when I go to my um, selection tool there, I can just literally move that background. There's still a couple of little cutouts here that I need to remove. Boop, boop. Okay, so now you can actually see that I've removed the background and now all of these shapes are the only thing on the layer. So now what I did was I cut out a couple of them to play around with them. Um, and I'm just gonna walk you through my layers because I already did this step. So I have, I just basically cut and pasted um, these three shapes onto their own individual layers. And I used my color palette to recolor them. So I already did the green and the pink. And now if you want to see what I did for the rust color here, you wanna make sure that your shape is has alpha lock selected. And what that means is you'll see the transparent squares pop up behind that element. And that just means that when you apply a brush to that layer, you're only gonna be able to paint on that object. So I'll just show you without alpha lock 
this is what it would look like if I if I added a brush to that layer. But with Alpha Lock, I can only go within that. So that's a fun way to recolor elements. Um, so let's say I wanted to recolor this element in this mustard color, and I can use my crayon shape to kind of give like a rough texture to it. So that's what I did with those three elements, but if you remember from the mood board, one of the treatments that I wanted to try out was this overlapping shape with maybe some transparency between them. So I took these three elements and I basically positioned them really, really large um, on this background image. And you can see the reason that it's grainy and everything, like I said, is I'm working with low resolution. So I'm manipulated. I'm manipulating just one image. But remember, in the future, this would be a high resolution element. So you could do things like this. But the pink that's on top of this green square, you just go to the, um, you click this little N or M here, and you can apply all of these layer styles. So I'm on multiply, but you can do linear burn, color burn. You can kind of go through the whole mix here. I like to multiply because it was kind of subtle. And so I did the same thing with this circle. And I really like what's going on here. There's texture. So you've got some of that creative tone word. There's the geometrics that we talked about as a, as a graphic element. There's the imperfect nature of the way that the shapes are created. So it's a little bit more organic. And I love the play of the transparency. I think it's vi visually really interesting. And so that's when I started bringing in some of these elements from the logo that I already created, like the little planet or the circle with the line through it, the stars, and just all of these other little hand-drawn elements in my different brand colors. And to do that, all I did was um, create a new layer and then make sure that my brush was on the crayons here. And I cho chose one of my brand colors and then you can just create all of these little doodles. And these will probably change perhaps when I start to go create the website because a lot of times I'm creating the graphic elements that I need for the context of the website. But this gives me such a visual language and a visual library to be able to play with and a lot of really unique elements to add to the website design. The final step of the stage is just to come back to my brand element board here and to paste that image so I can kind of see how it plays with the rest of my elements. And I really like that, like I said, so I think that pretty much solidifies in my mind that I'm going to go ahead and purchase that font with the hand painted elements. I know I can use those. And then the other graphic element that I was deciding on was the stock photos because I know I'm going to need that for the website build. And the one that I found was over here on Creative Market. It was this I think it was called tan lifestyle photos and I like that it comes with little mock-ups too so again keeping in mind that this target fictional brand would be a creative studio of some kind so maybe they'd want to show their work or things that they've designed or clients that they've worked with etc on the mock-ups um, so I did just copy like screenshot again try before you buy one of those images to see how it played with the colors and I like that the graphic elements are much more free-flowing and creative and quirky and all of those tone words. But then to me, these photos bring in that simplicity and refined part of the brand tone words. So I really like the way that these play off of each other. And I just uh, mocked up a little headline style here that I might play around with just again to see how all the elements play together. And I added my little shapes there. So I'm really happy with the way that these all balance one another and as I said my next step is going to be to purchase those two items the stock photos and the Ryland font with the shapes and now I have all the elements I think that I need in order to start designing this website.